The government's injected hundreds of millions of dollars into a fund to secure a COVID vaccine, but it won't say exactly how much because it doesn't want to compromise its ability to do a deal. The money's on top of $37 million earmarked earlier this year for domestic research, boosting manufacturing capability and supporting international research collaborations. The government says this latest round of funding will give it access to promising candidates as well as joining collective initiatives working towards securing a vaccine. The announcement was made at the Mulligan Institute, where scientists are racing to come up with their own vaccine. The research director there, Professor Graham Legros, says the money shows New Zealand can be taken seriously. I think it's fantastic, that level of intent, because I think you need to start building the confidence that actually we have some real um, heft going into this, because it's been small amounts of money, very targeted, and you can see what's happening globally major amounts of money to try and secure a position or actually give confidence it's worthwhile even discussing with us as a nation with vaccine. Just think about vaccine suppliers or if we're trying to do a deal to either manufacture someone's vaccine, we've got to show there's a commitment with the government behind us. They won't tell us exactly how much because they don't want to compromise their ability to do a deal. But, you know, you move in these kinds of circles. How much does it cost to get in the game and get a vaccine? It's changed. It's changed. And that's the honest truth. Um, It costs not very much to get in the game. The real game is finishing. Finishing with that phase three clinical trial, finishing with manufacturing and actually having manufacturing and finish and fill of those little bottles of vials to a degree that satisfies regulatory issues. The real cost is making a vaccine which is safe. And actually, it doesn't get made in some factory and the wrong things get put in it. That costs a fortune, having all the apparatus and the, 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 the automatic machines that actually do all that safely and well million, at the level of millions of vials a week or a month production. So the nuts and bolts cost you a lot of coin, potentially more than actually coming up with the stuff that goes inside the nuts exactly. and bolts. So, so today we showed the Prime Minister a vaccine. Actually, we could shove into our arms sort of thing, but it's actually making it... at high level in a safe way, which is not contaminated, it actually lasts the distance. We've heard a lot about the Moderna vaccine, which is the messenger RNA vaccine, but it's got to be stored at minus 80. The cold chain is impossible for any country, even for America. No one has minus 80 freezers in their medical clinic. We couldn't distribute it around the world. So do you get anything from this fund today? You you know, you you there at the Mulligan Institute, you're in the game, you're racing to come up with your own vaccine. We're making one right now. We've we've done the entry thing. Um, What this does, it gives us serious kind of um, uh, sort of credibility that if we had the right vaccine that could be accelerated up, We've got the government behind us to say, OK, let's make manufacturing plants work like this. So it's serious intent to show that if we've got one which works the right way for the museum population, and remember, we don't want to commit which one it is, because then people, it's a guaranteed market then. We want to get the right one for New Zealand, that New Zealanders will accept. And we've actually got to work through a few things like that. OK, so in terms of what you're doing, last time we spoke, you said, and I'm quoting you here, you said you were going for it, Right. So yeah. how far have you got? Well, we have made one that looks cool and we've injected some mice and they've made a response. And we now think, yippee, it actually works. We've got to check and do some real diligence now to say, can it really neutralise the virus in its tracks? Can it really stop, get the right part? Because the real problem, we talk about spike protein and the ACE2 receptor, which is throughout our body, we've got to stop that interaction. You can make a lot of antibodies to the virus components. We've got to actually stop that ability of the virus to infect the cells of our body. We've got to do that testing. Once I know that, then I say, hey, we've got a good vaccine. Okay, so you've put it into some mice. And, you know, in lay people's terms, in terms that I can understand, how did it go? What did you see? Good response. Good response. So cured the mice? No, we do that at the end of the year. I'm sorry to sound so slow, but we've got to actually get the safety road so we can actually challenge the mice with the real virus. At so the the 
So when you say good response, by your definition, what's a good response? What made it a good response? Well, there's markers of a good response. We've got a lot of experience about how our body responds. It's a standard old virus. And so we can actually measure the antibody TETA. So we're all going to learn as a nation. You know, we're going to have Immunology 101. It's the TETA of antibody, the concentration of this very protective protein made in our blood by the cells of the immune system and how high a level and how good a quality it is they call, use the word quality, we say high affinity, that will determine how good a response it is, how good it is at protecting against disease. And there's two things we've got to start learning. There's disease, which actually stops the thing from really affecting all our cells, but also can it stop infection? Can it stop the virus so it no longer spreads to our neighbours? And at the moment, the vaccines we're talking about, the Modernas, the, even the Oxford, they'll stop disease in the trials that's been done, but they won't stop the spread of the virus to other people. So your, your grandma or your granddad. So there's a lot of challenges here. These first vaccines will do a job, but to a certain level. They'll protect our healthcare workers. They can protect you if you want to go overseas, perhaps. But actually stopping the virus spreading around the community to all who are vulnerable, we may need a second type of vaccine, which is what we're trying to build now at, Prof- at here in New Zealand. Professor, are you a runner? Um, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> but, but if this were a race, let's say it's a marathon, how far through are you? Um, that, I th- uh, uh, that's a tough one. I, I know. I, it, it, because, no, actually, I suppose we're about, we're about a quarter of the way through. I, but in some ways, in the next few months, we're going to learn so much knowledge that actually we'll know exactly what to do. That's why I think it's a tough one. It's not a very linear thing where we're halfway through a long journey. There's a few bits of information and knowledge about the virus, about the capacity, what how producing, what type of virus can do. And there's a few bit, few results we're really hanging on for with the phase three clinical trials that are now underway. We're gonna, we just need to find a bit more what really stops the virus dead. And when we've got that, then things will really go fast because yeah, well- we know. Private resources. Because that's interesting, because last time we spoke, the other thing you said to me is go later. You said go later yeah. than everybody else. Yeah. I want to have no to more, no yeah. more, and yeah. get to the finish sooner. Yeah. So you're exactly. sticking with that plan? I'm sticking with that plan. And where are your confidence levels at right now? Well, I've been losing confidence because things are getting around the world less communicative. There's been a lot more... With the, with the drug companies being involved, there's a lot more shutdown around IP, there's less sharing of some of the information. But in general, um, we're seeing a, a, still there. Um, I'm gaining confidence in that the virus is looking stable. It's not like a flu virus. It doesn't shift and shape shifts for the immune system. So we make a good vaccine. It'll last for a while for the people. So there's some really good things emerging. It seems as though we've targeted, that we can target the right protein. And there's another really good thing is we're not causing ill effects. There was a big fear. When we last spoke, one of the big fears going around was what will happen to people who are vaccinated and then they get infected? Will they have their lungs cough up? Will they actually die from other bad adverse reactions? We're not seeing that at the moment. It may be that only occurs in certain subpopulations of, the, of our community, but at the moment, it's looking a lot better as far as those adverse reactions. So you have referenced that Oxford uh, trial there. And, well, they're sort of talking about Christmas. Yeah. Yeah? No. They're trying to, now, you've got to remember, and you're a media junkie, I'm a media junkie, we're being led along a little bit by, by things, and they're trying to keep people's confidence, which is not a bad thing, because if people had to think they're not going to get a vaccine until, honest truth, March next year in the UK, they'll start rioting, wouldn't they? Isn't it better to lead them along the nose? So there's those very considerations. There's also the... These, when you've got the hands of the drug companies, they want to keep interest from the from the investors in their in their products. It's about making a stamp and attracting the attention. It's a very much a, 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 a an environment where the loud, noisy ones attract all the attention and all the money. I don't approve of that necessarily, but there's some good, quiet ones also just getting on with business. And if we know they can do the right vaccine, we'll choose them. You don't have to look, choose the noise. Making sense there? Yeah. So if you're about quarter of a way through this and it's not a linear journey, God, I hate to say this to you, but I have to know, when do you reckon you can deliver? 
I, I, I put my hand on heart today and said, end of next year. And people go, ooh, ooh. but other people in our team said, oh, Graham, we can do better than that. So we have a differing opinion. I'd say between 18 months and two years, there'll be vaccines starting to be available here in New Zealand. The pressure will be on. We'll have to have. There's no choice, actually. There's no choice because can you imagine 2023 with no vaccine? You'll be rioting, won't you? It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking time out. Just before we go, because I'm talking to you on Skype, please tell me that's not the formula for your vaccine on the whiteboard behind you there in the picture. Oh, no. Well, that's absolutely right. We're trying to avoid these ones, make those ones, and it all gets into the blood and wipes everything away. That's it. Boom. And that was Professor Graham Legros.